Uh, hopefully everybody's over here. Uh, just so you know, the last time I had slides and I was doing it on my thing, but whatever happened that Chris and I set up, it quit working. So you didn't get any of the slides <clears throat> from the last one, but today, Brother Anthony is going to sit in the booth to make sure the slides turn. <clears throat> As the slides turn. This is the days of our lives. I just want you guys to know there are some people in this room that love me so much. That we would sit here for hours. That love me so much. They got me a birthday present some 10 years ago. And turned it into me today. Oh my goodness. They might want to say, I'm not going to say what their names are. He said he was, he said he was downsizing and, he found, and they found it. It's, it's, yeah, it's kind of like Nate. Nate was going through his room, man, cleaning stuff, and he comes out one day and he says, man, look what I found. And he had some vibrating slippers. <laughs> All right, well, we want to get started because Kimberly told me I only have an hour. <clears throat> bunch of backsliders. <laughs> Past hey Chris, would you pray for us? Amen. We'll be starting on page 18. We'll be talking about defining team. We all know that wearing the same uniform doesn't make us a team. A team is more than a collection of people. It is a process of give and take. Definition of team. While teams play a very important part in our lives, not every group is a team. There is more to team than gathering two or more people together. Therefore, it is important that we properly define team. It is further important that we turn to the source of team for a proper definition. So you're going to take just a few minutes here, and you're going to uh, look on your next page, and we're going to defining team. And you're going to give out your favorite team example. It can be any type of team that is, that is a good example of you, something that you've looked at, something that you've seen, something you've participated in. And uh, you can look and see what team you're the greatest fan of and what characteristics make it a good team in your eyes. <clears throat> Kind of look up when you're done, please. You people that are more than three rows back might need to wave your hand as well. <laughs>
Okay, we can't have everybody share, but somebody want to share what um, your favorite team that you have been a part of or know of? You want to share what it is? Don't be embarrassed. Anybody? I was part of the code team and the RR team, which is RR team, which is rock and response team. I did it for many years, and I love being a part of it, first of all, because we were saving lives. But second of all, when we worked together, we were fluid. Everybody knew their part. <coughs> Everybody complimented one another. Uh, we knew when to change, when somebody was getting too weary. Um, we knew whoever was doing shooting the drugs or somebody was shocking or somebody was reading the rhythm or somebody was calling the code and telling what to do. And so we all moved and one goal was to save lives. Okay, good. Somebody else? <coughs> What's your favorite team that you're a fan of? <clears throat> what were the characteristics? Okay, good. Uh, Anthony, you recording this? Thank you, sir. Okay, some, one more, one more. Does that mean the rest of you didn't answer it? Just one more. Quick, 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 quick. Good. Okay, the concept of team does not find its origin in man and is therefore contrary to human nature. Write out in that square there, write out your definition of team. Okay, let's look at the dictionary's definition. The World English Dictionary says, a group of people organized to work together. Uh, two, it says, a group of players forming one of the sides in a sporting contest. Three, two or more animals working together to pull a vehicle or agricultural implement. Four. Such animals and the vehicle, the coachman riding his team. Five, Di uh, dialect, a, a flock, herd, or brood. Wikipedia says a team comprises a group of people or animals linked in a common purpose. Teams are especially appropriate for conducting tasks that are high in com complexity and have many independent subtasks. A group in itself does not necessarily constitute a team. Teams normally have members with complementary skills and generate synergy through a coordinated effort which allows each member to maximize his or her strengths and minimize his or her weaknesses. Team members need to learn how to help one another help other team members realize their true potential and create an environment that allows everyone to go beyond their limitations. Let's take a look at the scriptural definition. 
Philippians 1, 27, 28. Whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you, this is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. When we think about this, when we look at in that passage of Scripture, we see where it says the one spirit. That one spirit there expresses the heart and the attitude of the team. We're operating in one spirit, one attitude, one mind. We're all working together. The statement as one expresses the unity of the team. We are unified, unified in mission, unified in objective. And then three, it says, for the faith of the gospel expresses the common goal of the team. We are about the gospel. So one heart, unity, and a common goal. Definition of a godly team. This is a testimony from Ron King. I have served on teams for 50 plus years. This includes sports teams, rock bands, military team, research and development teams in the market, our workplace, and ministry teams. I began serving on ministry teams in 1970 as a youth ministry leader. I have worked with church planting teams for over 40 years. I have served on the same eldership leadership team for 40 years and the same apostolic teams for 46 years. I have also served on citywide leadership teams. Team has been a way of life for me. The Lord has led me and others I am joined together with into team without us having any revelations of team. We were men born out of season for such a time as this. This is truly the goodness of the Lord. We cannot claim any wisdom, knowledge, or under, and understanding in ourselves, Colossians 1.9. Having served on both worldly teams and godly teams, I have come to recognize a significant difference. The challenge is not to operate by the wisdom of the world. Many ministry teams fall into this trap, and it produces disastrous results. Somebody look and read 1 Corinthians uh, 3, 1 through 3. could not speak to you <clears throat> as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are, not, you are still not able. For you are still carnal, for, there, for where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Somebody read James 3, 13, 16. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy or self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie about the truth, against the truth. The, this wisdom does not descend from heaven, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Did you say 15 or 16? 16. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. It is the making of a losing team. Team goals are not met. There are divisions, jealousies, and hurt or damaged lives. Godly teams should have a, have a byproduct of healing, spiritual growth, and strong relationships. I have laid out a definition below for the kingdom-centric team. Here is the kingdom-centric 
definition. A kingdom-centric team is led by the Spirit. It has sanctified guidance. It releases collective creativity, sanctified entrepreneuring. Operates by the mind of the Lord, sanctified genius. It moves in unity and one accord witness, a sanctified oneness. And conquers all enemies of the kingdom by the power of the Holy Spirit, a sanctified force. Ministry teams under construction. Having served on both worldly teams and godly teams, I have come to recognize a significant difference. Teams functioning properly operates as a collective singular. Working as a godly team develops and manifests the spiritual disciplines that enable us, his church, to live and work as har- in harmony with one another. By mastering all the one another's, godly team disciplines bring about the incarnation of that one new man, collective singular, that Jesus sacrificed himself for. In Ephesians 2.15, it says, his purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two. When we walk in that unity, we walk as one, not many. The Bible says that the body of Christ is many members. It's one body, but many members. All those members working together for the function of that body. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14, for as the body is one, And has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For the fact, for for in fact, the, the body is not one member, but many. These scriptures reveal the revelation of the collective singular. Who are the many? Redeemed by the one. There are the many collective who are one singular in the one singular. These are the many collective who make up the one singular body of the one singular Jesus Christ. In Christ, we have been made one. Yes. Ephesians 1, 22, 23 says, And God placed all things under his feet. And appointed him to the head over everything for the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the priesthood, an army of the Lord stationed throughout the earth, advancing God's kingdom by a violent and radical love that is conquering and displacing the kingdom of darkness with the kingdom of light. God has called us with this violent, passionate love to go out into the world and love it into the kingdom. As we do that, as we focus our attention on that objective, then we understand what our mission is. Our mission is not to go out and bust people in the chops. But our mission is, is through Christ to go out in love and introduce them to a Savior that paid the price for them to enter into his kingdom. The problem in the church is that we have learned we do not know who God is. And so we spend a lot of time here trying to help us to see who is God. God's not a finger-pointing God. God is a God that is a welcoming God. God loves, and so his people have to be driven and motivated by love. Same way when we operate in the ministries of our church. We operate together in teams according to the love of God after the same thing, the same objective, and that is that Christ would be glorified. Earth is experiencing many sightings, visitations, and habitations of heaven on earth. We continue to hasten the day when the kingdom of heaven shall fully engulf the earth, and all its enemies are completely destroyed, even death and the grave. When we look at team, we understand there is no I in team. There's no place for I in team. We need to learn a new language. Learning team language, we need to replace the I with team pronouns. For example, plural pronouns. 
us, them, they, we, ourselves, themselves, yourselves, and theirs. Learning team language is important. List words that you can write down in this exercise that speak of togetherness. Words that speak of togetherness. Okay, let's uh, somebody share one of the words you wrote down. Let's just, let's just get started and go. Body. Body. Unity. Unity. What was it? Join. Join. Relationship. Relationship. Together, partner, harmony, harmony. Alongside. what was it? Alongside. Alongside. Okay, some of these were mentioned, but here's, here's a list that you can also look at. Unity. Solidarity, oneness, kinship, team, connection, partnership, and alliance. One of the reasons and purposes for this exercise is that we would begin to look outside ourselves. Looking beyond self. Again, as I talked about this morning, um, we have way too much of self still involved in the things that we do. God wants us to begin to look outside of self. Group exercise, okay? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to split up. Let's see, how many people do we have? Okay, so we have 30, so we could do six groups of five. So break up into groups of five. We're going to build a team. Yeah, you might have to move. I know it's hard. You might have to move. And those of you that are real lazy, just grab one person next to you and pull them into your five. Just real quick, real quick, real quick. You're going to build a team, and then that block, is, you're, going to, you're going to begin to identify your team goal, your team name, your team motto, and your team roles. I said that you're going to, what you're going to be defining, you're going to build your own team. You're going to talk about your team goal. You're going to do your team name. It's in the box. Team motto and your team roles.
Beth, where'd Stephen go? Ten minutes, ten minutes. I know I saw Pastor Doug back here with his hands going crazy. <laughs> Getting into the fight song. He he's, the, he, he's the leader, the What's chair that? leader. Is he the one leading the fight song cheer? He could be. I'm cheering. I'm cheering. He could be the one with the best. As a team, we're doing it as a team. I'm just playing my role. That's the best. <laughs> Five minutes. Is everybody done? Who's all done? Are you guys done? You guys in the back done? Are you guys done? I'm going to say you're laughing loud enough. Y'all be done. Okay, let's finish it up.
pick someone to represent your team to share with what your results are. It's okay for there to be one spokesperson. Hmm. Okay, who's going to, here we go. You guys done? Come on up. Okay, the front row group here. Who's speaking? Who's representing? <laughs> Who, who is, who's going to speak? There's the mic. Okay. Um, our team goal is encouragement. And our team name is Encouragers. <laughs> Man, this is... Our team motto is, if God be for you, you won't fail. He'll lift you up and you'll prevail. <laughs> we, we tried to get Michaela to cheer for us, and we did it. And John was supposed to lift her up. So. <laughs> Man, I think we need to go back. I think we need to go back to that. Go ahead, finish up. Team roles. Our team roles are um, to come alongside, undergird, sustain, preserve, uplift, encourage, support, active listening, and comfort. All right, good. Yeah. Okay, who's the spokesperson for this next row? Oh, boy. Hello. So our team goal is uh, making disciples. And our team name is Apostles. And our team motto is Go Spread It. <laughs> Man, that's a dangerous statement. I believe you guys could spread it all right. <laughs> And we had, like, individual team roles, so, like, everybody was assigned a role. Um, Anthony is our hype man and our information person. Uh, I'm the team speaker. Heather is administrator. My mom, Jessica, is the intercessory prayer. And my dad, Richard, is security. And Layla is our teacher. And uh, my son, Josiah, is our mascot. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> Our team goal was to have like a ministry moment and tell everyone across the street about Jesus by having a cookout and clothes drive. Um, and our team name is the Go-Getters. Our motto is go and tell instead of show and tell. Um, our team roles is Gina is going to be in charge of food donations. I'm going to make a flyer to hand out and post on Facebook. Andrew is going to be in charge of getting the grill together and take, like organizing the men to get tables set up and everything. Beth is going to be in charge of uh, clothes donations and organizing them for the event. And Chris is going to be the grill master. Grill master. All right. Good. Yeah. Next. Okay. Um, team goal is you said unit as one as a family of Christ. Unite. Oh, okay. I can read your handwriting. Team uh, name is Family Matters. Team motto, discuss, plan of action, and act as one in Christ. And team roles, we have uh, Ricky and Mom as 
lead the children and grandchildren, and me and Richard are to lead our children. Yeah, good. No, I just don't like Pass it back. How did I know it was Jackie? Okay. So our team goal is to share the gospel, reach others for Christ. And our team name is the Outreach Otters. And... <laughs> And we otter share the gospel is our motto. <laughs> and our team roles were all to, we were to work together and you need to be spirit led. So we didn't have individual goals because we're all just going to do it together. Um, where God goes, we go. That's another one of our mottos. And we're going to walk in love and share the gospel. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So uh, the team goal is not to move. Now what? What now? Not to move. Not to move. Yeah, we didn't want to move, so we, that's why we made our team here. <laughs> not to move. That was our goal. <laughs> so uh, I want to hear our, the rest. Our team name is the Unmovables. Unmovables. Okay, Unmovables. our team motto, we shall not be moved. We shall we not shall be moved. Not be, we shall not be We moved. shall we not be. be. Makes I you just want to get into it. We shall not be moved. There you go. Um, it's our fight song. Uh, Renat is the rock. Nate was a pylon. Fred is the cable. I am the bolt. And Doug is the nut. Can you say that again? I didn't hear it. <laughs> Renat is the rock. Nate is the pylon. Fred is the cable. I am the bolt. And Doug is the nut. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let's, hey, let's give everybody a hand. You guys did good. It's important that we define those things, though. You know, we're doing it and fun here, but it is important that as team we understand what our goal is. It also is very important that we identify who we are, what we're, what we're about, and uh, a motto, a vision of what we're going to do, how we're going to declare it. And each person, according to their Gift needs to know their roles, right? Isn't that right? Isn't that how we should be looking at, whether we've done it in the past or not, how we should be looking at developing our teams is according to gift mix. We should want every one of our teams to have a representation of the five-fold minister gifts as much as lies within us. And, and listen, this is important too. We, we are getting ready to have a prophetic conference. And we here at the local church, we've had some prophetic, but we have not had a lot of definition. And so what are we going to do since we don't have any mature, so to speak, um, necessarily prophetic roles? We have people that are prophetic, but what are we looking for? We're looking for mature prophetic. So we're going to, we don't have it. So what are we doing? We're importing it from outside to speak into us, to make us better, and help us to develop, right? Yeah. On our teams, we need to have those five-fold ministry gifts, but where we don't have it, we have our whole team. How many of you know, how many of you know we have individual teams? Yeah. Yeah. Men's team, women's team, on and on and on, right? Yeah. But overall, we have a team. Yes. Yes. Do, you not see, do you see that? Yeah. We have a team, and, and the team has an overall vision and direction. Yes. And our desire is that all of our teams would operate and function within that same directive and that same vision. And so if you have a team, and you're on a team, and you don't have one of the gifts, but you need to speak into what it is that you have some um, oversight over, 
you can go outside that and get someone to come in to speak on that level, whether it's pastoral, whether it's prophetic, whether it's apostolic. We need to know the importance of those. Amen? Amen. So good job. Okay, we want to talk about team player. Team player. Taking the eye out of team. None of us is as smart as all of us. None of us is as smart as all of us. And, and we use this passage of Scripture. We only know in part, and we only prophesy in part. There is nobody in here that has the whole word or the direction. Right? It, it, is, it takes all of us. It takes all of us in order to find the real answer. Individual commitment to a group effort, that is what makes a team work, a society work, a civilization work. Vince Lombardi said that. Individual commitment to a group effort is what makes it work. And so when we look at the little cartoon next door, we see there he says the economy has, call, had to call, has caused us to have some cutbacks and in the midst of that, it's, had, it's forced us to redefine what team player is. You can see he's getting ready to give that mop and that bucket to the guy that's doing the coffee pot. The question comes in is, are you a team player? In the team, everybody does, everybody does chores. Everybody does windows. Everybody has roles. It's an expectation of what we are to all do. <clears throat> a team player. Are you a team player? That's what you have to ask yourself. Are you one who unites others toward a shared destiny through sharing information and ideas, empowering others, and developing trust? Have you worked for teams where everyone pitches in and you all work together in perfect harmony? Do you always play to your strengths in a team? Or are there times when the group you're in just doesn't get it? <clears throat> it it's called, it's, it's what we call um, preferring one another or deferring to one another. We talk about those things. When we are in a team, it's, so, it's very important that we defer to the proper gift. Is that not right? It's important for us not to think that we have all the answers. Sometimes we just need to be quiet and listen to the one that's gifted in that arena. Either way, teamwork is such a vital way of completing projects or accomplishing your goal that it's worth developing and refining the skills that will help you make, make a valuable contribution, be a team player to whichever type of team you're in. You're in. Sports teams are perfect examples of how many players working together can achieve much more than one player who is acting alone. For example, you may not be the best goal scorer, but you're great at moving the ball forward. You know that if you pass that ball to the person who can score, the team has a better chance of winning. Everyone on the team does a different role. According to these strengths and by helping and encouraging one another along the way, you can make some inspiring things happen. Off the sports pitch and back in the workplace, church, or wherever, we hear the term good team player a lot. But what does this really mean in a, in a business, ministry, or church context? What do teams and leaders want from their team members? And how can you make a more significant contribution to your team? Uh, the other day, Pastor Doug and I were in a meeting, and, and, and I thought this was a really good example of the importance of playing team. Uh, there was two college basketball schools playing for uh, in the championship, and um, the one team had a guy who was, what, Pastor Doug, seven foot four, something like that. And, and so they were, the other team, uh, in their preparation for this game, they were trying to figure out, should we double team him? Should we, should we really try to keep him from, 
from um, everything. He's, he's probably their best player. You know, what do we want to do? The decision was made that we'll just play him one-on-one, and everybody else will take their player and guard them, and we'll play him one-on-one. And we're going to play multiple people on him because we're going to need to because of the foul situation. And so what they did was they did that, and they made their minds up before the game ever started that, that they were going to let that guy, seven-foot-four guy, get his points, but nobody else around there was going to beat him. And he did. He got his points. But they shut down everybody else because of their strategy. They worked together. They worked together. Guys on the bench, guys on the court, all worked together to do everything they could to keep him to a minimum, but stop everybody else. And you know what? Even though the team that was doing that, the team that had the seven foot four player, they were considered way better. But this team had a strategy. They worked together. They fulfilled their goal. They fulfilled their mission. And they won the championship. They won the tournament. And I, I think that's a good example for us to understand that, you know, a team can have somebody that's really, really gifted. But that person that's really, really gifted can't do it still by themselves. You, you may feel like, man, you really are gifted. But you need to learn real quick that you cannot do it by yourself. It takes everybody. It takes everybody recognizing your role and everybody else's role. You know, we don't sometimes look at the guy that's bringing the ball down the court as that important. But if you can't get the ball down the court, the people that can score cannot do it. It takes that guy's ability to get the ball down the court, find the open person, and get them the ball so they can score. It takes a team setting picks. It takes a team doing different things in that game plan, and they all working together get it done. An example, uh, back in, still into sports, uh, Michael Jordan was considered the goat of basketball. LeBron James is right behind him, but Michael Jordan didn't win any championships by himself. He had his players that were with him, and if it would not have been for them, they would not have won the championships. LeBron James has won a few, but he's over at the uh, uh, team Los Angeles Lakers now. And you know what? They got a bunch of egos on the team, supposedly, and they haven't won a championship. Why? Because one person can't do it. It's not about one. It's about a team working together and everyone contributing to that team. The importance of a good team player. Teams are created for several reasons. They may need to deliver a one-time project or work together on an ongoing basis. Either way, if you take advantage of a group's collective energy and creativity, the team can accomplish much more in less time. We know know the synergism, don't we? One can put 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. We know the importance. We just sometimes don't practice it. What does this mean for you? Well, teams are probably an integral part of how things are done in your organization. If you show that you have the ability to work well with others, this could have a major impact on your um, uh, career and your calling. Your career is your job, which provides a living. Careers or jobs can change. Your calling is your assignment from the Lord and doesn't change. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. We may stop doing them, but we're stopping to do them. We're not doing them anymore out of disobedience to the Lord. My callings and gifts don't change. I am to continue to work together to fulfill what God has for me. Use your strengths. Do you know what you do best? Do you know what you do best? And, and this is back to another thing. I, I, I can't remember which one of us it was. I'm sure we've all talked about it one time or another. Pastor Fred, Pastor Doug, Pastor Sean, myself, as we've shared in the message. It's important to know what your role is because it's important for you to stay in your lane. If you don't know what your role is, if you don't know what your gift is, you're going to get out of your lane into somebody else's lane and it's going to be a problem. There's not going to be unity. So it's important for us to know what we do best or what our makeup is. Um, you know, how has God knit me together? How has God made me? 
I can look back. Jerry Westerfield can look back, not just from 18 on. I can look back at my times as a teenager, and I can see how God worked through me and in me in those period of times to help identify what I am today. Because, you know, it, you know, what you can do to help find out who you are is what do you have a passion for? What is it that you have a passion for? Perhaps you're incredibly organized, or you might excel at motivating people, helping resolve disagreements, or researching hard-to-find information. You may bring spiritual insight, vision, casting skills, wisdom, and knowledge. Learning both your natural and spiritual giftings, talents, and strengths help you fulfill your role on any team. That's why we identify Father gifts, Son gifts, Holy Spirit gifts. It is important for us to know what our Father gifts are. Hospitality, administration, giving, some of those things. It, it's important, administration. It's important for us to know because we carry those over into our Jesus gifts. And we carry those things over into our team functions. Whatever your strengths, you have something valuable to offer. Find a role within your team that, you, that, that allows you to do what you do well. This will help you to make a meaningful contribution and increase your chances of doing a great job. Plus, it's usually much easier and more satisfying to do basics or to do tasks when you're naturally good at them. Teams usually come together to handle an issue that's difficult, if not impossible, for people to do on their own. When a group works well together, creativity levels are generally higher. As, perhaps, as people tap into one another's strengths, this often leads to increased productivity and an inspiring sense of collaboration and cooperation that moves everyone and the project forward. It's all about moving what we're doing forward. It's about reaching the goal, isn't it? And it's not about who gets the credit. It's about accomplishing the task that's been set before us. Key points. Being a good team player isn't always easy. I, I, I want you to know this right now, straight up front. Um, team is better, but team is not easier. Now, we could say team is easier when we're dealing with conflicts because we have, it's not just one individual that's having to take the brunt of it. But when you're talking about having harmony, unity, functioning in that nature, team is dip more difficult. And there's going to be team infractions. There's going to be times when we make mistakes. There's going to be times when we fall short. But the simple fact of the matter is it's a whole lot easier for somebody just to make a decision than to have to wait for four or five people to get together to pray and seek the Lord to make that decision. But the better thing about that is, is when we have those four or five people and we get together to pray, we're more likely to come up with the mind of Christ. So even though team may be harder or seem harder, it really works out for the better because it's the best way. Be positive. Help others as much as you can um, by being co cooperative and willing to work hard, you'll be a blessing to everyone, including um, the Lord. Three factors that we have, three factors to determine value is commitment, skill sets, and attitude. Okay, we're going to go over now and we're going to look at ten qualities of a good team player. We're going to take a little thing here. We're going to uh, grade it at the end and um, see where we're at, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to go through these 10 questions, nine questions, 10 questions, and you're going to answer between one and five how that applies to you. One is least, five is most.
look up when you're done with your scoring. Everyone done? Huh? Ten. All ten of these. Oh, sorry. Man, how long does it take you? It's not bad. Oh, really? I mean, you don't got to sit there and... I know, but you don't have to comp- contemplate for 15 minutes. <laughs> Are you done? Add your totals up. Divide your total by 10. And then you can see where you fall in that number. Did anybody come out as a perfect team player? Besides Richard? Okay, this gives you an idea of maybe some things to work on. Teamwork. Teamwork simply stated, it is less me and more we. Teamwork is the fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results. So what is teamwork? It takes as much work to work as a team as it does to perform your role on the team. Teamwork is defined in Webster's New World Dictionary as 
a joint action by a group of people in which each person subordinates his or her individual interests and opinions to the unity and efficiency of the group. Now, this is, this is not easy to do. And, and what we're saying here is, is that sometimes we may have a way that we think things ought to go. But what we do is we submit our way to the whole of the team. And sometimes how we see it or how we felt about it or what we thought when we come out of the team meeting to set, the, 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 uh, and p- set our position, my way or somebody else's way, didn't, it didn't go that way. So what are we supposed to do when that happens? I'm on a team. I bring something to the table. The idea's kicked around. Um, but as we go around, we find out, wait a minute, this is not, we don't think we ought to do this. So anyway, by the time we got done, we're, we're doing something, but we're not doing it the way I brought it. And so we're going out, but it's a different way. What should be my posture as a team member going out? What now? Except what was decided? What would you say? Everyone on the same page. Except what was said and supported. Okay. Except what was said and supported. As if it was your own. Huh? As if it was your own. Yes, as if it was your own. And, and, and what is the opposite of that? I go in, present that, it got changed, we're doing it different, we go out. And later on that day, we're in a discussion with somebody, two or three, four people, and we're talking about um, what's been projected, what's going to be done. And, and I, instead of me saying, man, it's going to be awesome, and uh, I'm really looking forward to what's going to take place as we move forward, I say, well, that's not how I brought it to everybody. But that's how we did it. How many of you know that's not team? What would you say, Pastor Fred? Yeah, so we'll see. This doesn't mean that the individual is no longer important. However, it does mean that effective and efficient teamwork goes beyond individual accomplishments. The most effective teamwork is produced when all the individuals involved harmonize their contributions and work towards a common goal. This is good... But God is better. A kingdom-centric team. A kingdom-centric team is led by the Spirit, as we talked before, sanctified guidance. It releases a collective creativity, sanctified entrepreneuring. It operates... By the mind of the Lord, sanctified genius, and moves in the unity and one accord witness, a sanctified oneness, and conquers all enemies of the kingdom by the power of the Holy Spirit, a sanctified force. We will develop the real essence of teamwork from the above definition of team for those on teams where the king, Jesus, and his kingdom are the center of all the goals, activities, and strategies. Strategies. Did you get that? King Jesus and the kingdom are the goals and activities, and all those things and strategies should be toward that. This end goal for every kingdom team is stated, 1 Corinthians 10 31, which says, So whatever you do, do for the glory of God. Teamwork on a kingdom centric team. A kingdom centric team is led by the spirit, sanctified guidance. All team members must exercise being led by the Holy Spirit, Romans 8, 14. We must take time individually and as a team to seek his direction. God's kingdom is not a religion. It is truly spiritual and of another world. Two, releases a collective creativity, a sanctified entrepreneur. All team members must focus on being creative by the Holy Spirit. 
We come up with Holy Spirit-generated ideas and solutions, Ephesians 1, 17, 18, that go beyond the box of religious ideas. Three, operates by the mind of the Christ, sanctified genius. All team members must put on and exercise the mind of Christ. We are not operating out of worldly logic. Somebody read 1 Corinthians 2.16, please. First Corinthians two sixteen, please. For who has known the Lord's mind that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. We want what Jesus wants, amen. We want what Jesus wants for the team. It is the Lord's will we bring collectively to the table. Four moves in unity of the Spirit, sanctified oneness. All team members must protect or guard the unity of the Spirit. Ephesians four three. God's kingdom cannot be divided. We continue to keep the unity even when we disagree. We choose to give the devil no place through divisiveness. Five, conquers all enemies. Sanctified force. All team members are to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and know how to wage a good fight against all enemies of the kingdom. Ephesians 6.10. A kingdom-centric team is always advancing God's kingdom in any endeavor. This means that we will always be facing resistance. The enemy is out to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The enemy is out to cause confusion. The enemy is out to cause jealousy, strife, discord. The enemy is out to produce all those things because his goal is to divide and conquer. Team building. Jesus was the ultimate team builder. The basic building block of good team building is for a leader to promote the feeling that every human being is unique and adds value. Proper team building is the starting point and a necessity to form a team that works teamwork. This places importance on the recruiting process. Jesus prayed through the night before selecting his team. We have not done this well. We have grabbed people, put them on a team just because we wanted to see more people on the team. We weren't looking, we weren't focused on their gifts or where they should be. And almost every time in every case, we find that it causes issues. And so we want to drop back and we want to punt. We want to make sure that as we see our teams develop and grow, we are building those teams in mind of the gifts that the person is gifted with so that the team can function in a way in which it should. An apostolic gift is a gift that helps to set the structure. It helps to administrate the structure. It helps to um, fix the structure. A prophetic is that that speaks the word of the Lord that a lot of times the church is not seeing or recognizing. He speaks the things that are yet to come and has not happened yet. An evangelist is a gatherer. He is somebody who goes out. Yes, all of us take part in watering. So all of us take part in planting. But the evangelist has this drive. They want to gather. The pastor is a shepherd. He calms the flock. He comforts those that need comforting. Um, he is there, the mothering side of the ministry, speaking those words of kindness and, and grace to those that need it. The, the teacher is that person who teaches line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. They have a goal, they have a desire to make sure that they teach the truth. They're not interested in teaching people things because they have itching ears. We should give consideration prayer before we begin selecting team members. We need the Holy Spirit's guidance. It is important to have the right people in the right place at the right time. Look at the, look at the wise counsel Moses' father-in-law gives him when Moses was uh, about to select uh, elders to work on his team. Exodus 
18, 17 through 23. This is not good, Moses' father-in-law exclaimed. You're going to wear yourself out and the people too. The job is too heavy and a burden for you to handle all by yourself. Now listen to me and let me give you a word of advice and may God be with you. You shall continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to him. Teach them God's decrees and give them his instructions. Show them how to conduct their lives. But select from all the people some capable, honest men who fear God and hate bribes. Appoint them as leaders over groups of 150 and 10. They should always be available to solve the people's common disputes, but have them bring the major cases to you. Let the elders decide the smaller matter themselves. They will help you carry the load, making the task easier for you. If you follow the advice and if God commands you to do so, then you will be able to endure the pressures and all these people will go home in peace. We receive excellent advice from this portion of Scripture. Jethro lists several good characteristics to look for in the selection process. We will look at each of these. When we're developing our teams, what is the most important thing we should look at? Speak up loud if you have an answer. Raise your hand. Let me see you. What is it? Their lives, lives, which would speak to what? Spirit, their character. What's more important to God, character or gift? God can gift somebody that, that he needs to gift. And, and somebody can be gifted, but if they don't have character, they destroy themselves and others. Character is the most important thing. In a team, what are we looking for? We're looking for people that have character, people that can be under authority, people that can um, be told what to do and they are obedient. That's, that's what uh, we're looking for. The characteristics that Moses was to look for in his team members were, if your response to the question is yes, cross out the... The N, if your response to the question is no, cross out the Y. Taught in God's word. Moses was to instruct them in God's word. Team members must be knowledgeable in the word. This is important in seeing God's will and applying biblical principles to their lives and on the team. Do you believe you are instructed enough in the word of God? Yes, no. They've got to be capable. Those who have the proper natural and spiritual abilities the team needs to accomplish the team's goals. We don't choose members for the team just because we like them. Do they have the skill sets needed is the question. Will they be committed to the team? Can they be a team player? Some people are very gifted but won't work as a team. Do you have or do you believe you have the gifts and talents to effectively serve present team yes no that person has to be honest can they be trusted with their responsibilities and follow through do others see them as a person of integrity do they have a good report and testimony with others will they keep a confidence when necessary are you trustworthy have a good report and someone who follows through, yes or no? God-fearing. Team members must have a genuine reverence and awe for God. They respect the Lord and his will in their lives. They don't live by the fear of man, rather they seek to please God. We are not looking for yes persons on the team. Do you have a sincere reverence for the Lord and his will? Yes, no. Hate bribes. We, uh, we want team members who will not be wrongly influenced by others in their serving and, and decision making. They will not be influenced peddlers for others. They won't sell out themselves or the team. They are genuinely trustworthy. Do you allow others to wrongly influence you and go against what is right? Yes, no. Available.
available. Even if they possess all the above characteristics, they will not serve the team effectively if they are not available. Their work schedule or other activities may keep them from being available to team and team members. They still are not suited for the team because of availability. Are you available to fulfill your team responsibilities? Yes, no. And the last thing we're going to do today is we're going to do this little exercise. I'm going to give you about 15 minutes, and we're going to break you back up in the same groups you were in before. Okay? Here's what you're going to do. You're going to, you're going to go work together to come up with these items. 38 cents, a button, 10 to 12-inch cross, a piece of candy, a broken shoestring, a strand of brown hair, a picture of your team together, a picture of two people holding hands. Go, now, you got 15 minutes.
No, you just hold on to it all. No. That's okay, I'll pass. When you're done, just hold on to your stuff and sit down. Is everybody done? Is everybody done? Okay, if you're done, let's sit down. Okay. What did you notice about how you had five people on your team? How did you notice about um, all the items that you had to get a hold of when you went to do them? How did, how did you feel like it all worked? Everybody pitched in. Everybody what? Pitched in. Everybody pitched in. Everybody was excited about doing their part. And... Huh? Everyone accepted their assignment. Everybody accepted their assignment. Um, and I'll tell you what. Uh, <clears throat> some were more motivated than others. In other words, some people might have dragged a little bit doing, is that what you're saying? <laughs> so they did, oh, so you were the one, they, they pulled your hair out? I'm just going by what she said. Awesome. <laughs> well, sometimes that is the case, right? You know, it only took you guys about six or seven minutes to do that. Um, when I did it, we did it in a hotel, so we weren't familiar with none of the surroundings, and it was very difficult to track stuff down, didn't have a house to run over to to get fun, m money, so it, you know, it took us a little longer. But you guys were, man, quick, efficient. You guys were going after people running everywhere. But it shows, us, it shows us how much faster and how much more efficient we are together than if we were one person going after those same items. How many of you know if you were one person going after those items, you'd still probably be looking? Yes. You would still be going after it. Yes. That was a big thing with us. Some teams, man, they were like fast. You know, they... They, they took their shoestring out of their shoe and cut it in several pieces and gave it to other team members so they could have theirs. I know I wouldn't do that, but anyway, <laughs> uh, they did. And so that's, that is another thing. And that's what we're supposed to be about, right? Yeah. We're supposed to not just hang out in our own little team, but we're supposed to be willing to help others in whatever capacity they need. Yes. Right? right? Good job. Okay. Everybody's mind and heart clear. Anybody got any comments?